Hello and welcome to this tutorial about profiling an application with the Intel Viton Profiler. My name is Martin Ernst and I work at the Pleiades Computing Facility at the University of Wuppertal. This tutorial is the first of several videos that will provide an introduction to the Intel Viton Profiler. In this first video, we cover everything necessary to take our first steps with Vtune. We want to learn what a profiler is and when to use it. And finally, we will be able to profile an application and start analyzing the results. So what does Vtune do? Vtune provides insight into the program execution of an existing application. There are a couple of examples listed on the right, where our test application ran for 37 seconds. You can also see summarizing statements about how well it utilizes the threads in the CPU and available features of the current architecture. We can see that this program is not bound by working with the memory and that it does not utilize any vectorization. Vtune also helps with finding hotspots, which are sections of the program that cause most of the execution time. It helps with assessing parallel performance in general. And as a last example, it can help us find cache misses where the data is loaded in an unfavorable way from memory into the CPU. In other words, it is a program to measure the behavior of other programs, also called profiler. And in this case, this is intended mostly for single and multi-threaded applications. The profiling in this tutorial is happening on a single machine. So from an HPC perspective, we are measuring on a node level. It can profile code executed on the CPU, but also on accelerators like GPUs or FPGAs. And it also supports multiple platforms, although in this tutorial we will use it only on Linux. Vtune provides multiple analysis types that each specialize on a certain topic. This picture lists all available analysis types with the performance snapshot at the top and for example the hotspots analysis on the top left. Some of these analysis types will be discussed in a different video in more detail, but it is good to know that they exist. Each analysis type can collect different data and focuses on its specialization when presenting the results. So the hotspots analysis is presenting the collected data to highlight program sections that contribute most to the total execution time. Some analysis types require root permissions or a special kernel driver that I will also explain later. Because of the different ways of collecting data, analysis types may also have varying execution or memory overhead. But a typical overhead of a profile in Intel Vtune is in the single digit percent range, which makes it very practical to use during development or in a production environment. So how does Intel Vtune work? Vtune is an event-based sampling profiler. Performance counters are regularly read during the program execution and these counters measure how often a certain operation or event occurred within the last time interval. These measurements are then attributed to the current location of the program. As a simple example, if the program is executing a loop and the performance counters see many idle clock cycles where the CPU is not executing any operations, then these cycles get attributed to this code section. The measurements of performance counters and attributing it to the current code location is a statistical process, so don't expect exact results if you repeat the process. Repeating a profile will result in slightly different measurements, but the overall behavior of your program is likely to stay the same. So what exactly is a hardware event? There are special purpose counters in modern CPUs that count the numbers of occurrences of many operations and conditions. Another example could be the cycles in which a cache miss has occurred. Measurements of events are typically combined into summarizing metrics. We have seen such metrics before and one example would be the amount of memory bound behavior. When do you want to use a profiler? It typically starts with some kind of observation. Examples may be, my application is too slow on this particular machine, or less specific, my application behavior is strange sometimes, for example, when I change the number of threads. In both cases, we get curious about a problem and want to understand what is going on. In a second step, we should look for a suitable test case. It should be as small as possible to keep iteration times short and reduce the resource footprint of our test case. On the other hand, we have to make sure that the test case is large enough such that the observed issue occurs at all. 
This is sometimes necessary if the issue is a problem that scales with the numbers of threads or if we reach upper limits in memory or throughput on the current platform. Too large examples can also produce too much data, which can become overwhelming for the machine and its user. If the test case already takes too long to execute, you may be able to produce a simplified example where you extract only a relevant section of the code where you expect your problem to occur. Both of the previous steps are the first steps in a process cycle. First, we observe an issue. For example, the execution time simply is too long. Next, we define and extract a test case that characterizes the problem. In a third step, we produce a baseline measurement. This can be a simple time measurement or already a first profile with VTune. In step four, we analyze the measurement and try to identify the problem. This is a difficult part because we need to put our measurement into the context of the platform where we ran the application and decide where to focus our effort. Maybe we observe that the computation or the data throughput is inefficient. From this, we need to form a hypothesis of why this is happening and what section of our program code is actually causing this. In the last step, we try to implement a fix for our hypothesized root cause. Of course, we don't know if it helped without any measurement. So we go back to step three and compare our new measurement to the originally established baseline. This relative comparison is a powerful method to identify program characteristics without relying too much on exact measurements. Btune can help with steps three and four by providing the tools to measure the behavior of a given application. Now let's see what we actually need to produce our first profile. First, we need to assume that you have access to a working installation of Intel VTune, either by installing it yourself on a machine you control or by consulting with your site documentation or administrator. Usually, you have to source a setup script or load an environment module of some sort. Btune utilizes the Linux tool Perf to collect event samples from the hardware performance counters on Intel CPUs. If it is not available, a special sampling driver might be required. This may be the case if the system administrator is restricting perf in the Linux kernel configuration for security policy reasons. But the sampling driver might also be necessary on two recent hardware, very old Linux kernels or non-Linux systems. The installation of the sampling driver or the Linux perf configuration requires root permissions. If you don't control the machine yourself, you need to contact the system administrator and ask if this is possible. In any case, you should be aware of this aspect since the access to performance counters is a requirement by VTune to produce detailed results. Don't worry too much though. VTune's user interface will warn you about missing features and approaches of how to resolve them. You can quickly check if hardware events can be collected as expected by running the VTune self checker script. It is chipped with the VTune installation. The output at the bottom lists all available analysis types on this particular machine. And here, most analysis types are available. GPU analysis types are not available for the simple reason that there is no GPU in this system. You also have to take into account how your application has been compiled. Building your application with the dash G flag is generating debug information for your compiled code and allows for a better association between collected metrics and the source code. You should also try to measure the real thing by working on a release build. As an example, CMake projects offer the option to build a release build with additional debug information. Btune is kind of specialized towards the Intel architecture, which is especially true for profiling with hardware event sampling. So make sure your software has been built for the correct architecture. We will create our first profile with this trivial test program. The listing only covers the computational workload, which essentially contains an addition and multiplication of two random vectors v1 and v2. Additionally, to artificially increase the workload, we are repeating both operations in a second for loop. This is not a very meaningful program, but it allows for two simple optimization approaches with OpenMP. We can use Pragma OMP SIMD to enable vectorized instructions for the addition and multiplication operations. And second, we can use Parallel 4 to run our trivial repetitions in the outside loop with multiple threads in parallel. Both optimizations will be used in a later tutorial and our current focus is to produce a single profile with a sequential version. After we set up our environment on this machine with module load VTune, we can type VTune-GOI to open the application. VTune works with projects that bundle measurements of an application with the configuration of how to run the application. 
we create a new profile by clicking on the corresponding button at the top. After choosing a name, we have to decide where the profiling measurements are stored. It makes sense to consider a fast local disk with a free capacity of a couple of gigabytes. On the next screen, we configure our project by selecting a host, defining how the application is launched, and finally, by selecting an analysis type on the right. VTune allows for performance measurements on remote hosts as well, but we will only consider a local host in this tutorial. We provide a path to our application binary and can specify additional application parameters. In this case, we execute the test program sequentially and repeat the outer loop 10,000 times. Using the application directory as a work directory, we'll place any output in the same folder as the executable. In the advanced section, you have access to additional features, most notably the option to pass environment variables, set an estimate for the program execution time, or limit the data collection size to a fixed number of megabytes. On the bottom right, there's a button to tell VTune where to search for source code or binaries. Both will be used to resolve function names and attribute measurements to the corresponding source code in high-level programming languages. This can greatly improve the readability of a given profile. Keep in mind that the listed path is not searched recursively, so you need to add them explicitly. The only thing left is to select a specific analysis type. By clicking at the top of the right column, we get multiple options. We will discuss the differences in a future tutorial, but the mouse over already provides a detailed description of each analysis type. Let's select the performance snapshot, which is a common starting point that can help you decide what other analysis types to consider next. Now we click on the play button at the bottom and let VTune execute our application as configured while collecting the event samples. After collection, a result page is shown. This page usually summarizes the platform information, elapsed time, and tries to highlight suspicious measurements for further analysis in a red color. The representation of the profile data on this summary page differs for each analysis type. A list of high-level metrics on the right can already tell you a lot about your application's performance. In this case, we see that we do not utilize most of the available CPU cores and that there is no vectorization. A mouse over above measurement results is providing more detail about what the underlying number actually means. The performance snapshot summary is recommending to run a hotspots and a threading analysis, an HPC performance characterization, as well as a microarchitecture exploration next to further study how to improve the application in these areas. To summarize, we have learned what Intel VTune is, got an idea of how it works and when to use it. To execute VTune, we need to configure our environment to set up an existing installation and we know that we may require a special sampling driver to make use of all the features. With this knowledge, we can perform our first measurements. As a next step, you can try to apply Intel VTune in a real project, try to make sense of your measurements and actually improve your application. In the next tutorials, however, we will discuss some details about CPU architectures and what the other VTune analysis types can tell you about a program.